Welcome to CMA or CGMA Strategic Case Study Exam Examination for the May to August 2024 exam. My name is Steve Chan, the course director at Global APC. Now I've been teaching the SCS from 2016 up until now. I've helped many students qualify uh, to become the member of CMA. Now, the company for the May and August sitting in 2024 exam is called Save Well Company. Now, what I've done for you is that I prepared the pre seen application notes specifically for you with a deep analysis of the case study exam. Now, the notes is approximately 160 pages. Now, firstly, in our chapter one, I'll be going through the pre seen material in depth. I'll be analyzing almost each paragraph and linking back with the practical knowledge. And then I'll be introducing to you the strategic case study exam in much more detail. So please do remember that the CGMA exam nowadays will have a completely different style of the exam questions compared to other professional qualifications. So this is why, according to the CGMA or the CIMA guidance, the exam link team wants candidates to be able to answer questions per the core activity A, B, C, D and E, including the business strategy and the ecosystem financing strategies, reducing risks and about the control environment. So making sure that we are, you are ready for that. And of course, in our course, as well as in the pre seen application notes, I've written the knowledge regarding the syllabus tailored to this company. No general stuff, but all tailored to the Safe Whale Company. I'll show you in a second. Now, firstly, let's see the pre seen material released by CMA. We've got the introduction, okay, about the industry and this company. So the industry is the security industry that Safe Whale Company is operating in, dividing into physical security services and also intelligence-led services. And then we are given the company called Safe Whale Company, including the annual report to the corporate governance board responsibilities and the risks that the company is currently facing, the financial statement and share price history. And of course, the very important thing is that we are given the news stories and according to my experience in the SCX exam that the news stories may be coming up as the case background, as the unseen background on the exam date. So I will show you of course what sort of areas that may be coming up, okay, so uh, later on. Now firstly Let's see the introduction of the case. Now, we are given the company name, it's called Safewell in the security industry. It's a quoted company, which means a public listed company, and offering advice, which means they tailor may service and support on the corporate security, and also the enterprise risk management. And of course, we will be providing lots and lots of services Okay, so not just for the, um, so for example, government and, and, and the company, not just for the online stuff, but also the offline stuff. Okay, I'll show you in a second. Now, we've got different services, so which means that, yes, the diversification of our revenue streams will be absolutely important in this industry. Now, from consultancy to counter security threat, both physical and cyber and you are the senior manager and it operates at a global basis and of course listed onto the stock exchange following the international financial reporting standard using the currencies called B dollars. Now firstly I would like to summarize all these bits and pieces okay into a few words before we apply them okay with relate to the actual Businesses. Now, firstly, it's the publicly listed company, so which means that it will need to follow the best practices according to corporate governance 
requirement. And of course, this paper is called strategic case study. So this means that in each and every time when you are structuring your answer, make sure that you are taking a holistic view, okay, of how to manage all the bits and pieces in one go, rather than focus uh, saying on uh, in the operational stuff. But uh, we need to focus on the strategic part. Of course, the services include the security guarding and consultancy. And you are the senior finance manager reporting to the board. So make sure uh, when you're advising the board later on the exam date, making sure you keep everything simple to read okay, your answer. So using short paragraphs and avoiding general stuff with more application to the case will be very important there. So it has a global presence. So this means that it may have a possibility to so complete maybe operating in less developed countries and there will be risks on that later on. We are given the currency and the IFRS. Now, firstly, I would like to apply the company. Firstly, let's see the real life similar companies to the Safe Rail company. The real company, number one, is called the G4S. Now, the G4S, as you can see, that not just it provides demand guard services, but also consultancy services as well. So over 56 countries. It's a global company similar to the Safe Rail company. Now, what I would say is that for such companies, including the Safe Rail company, we need to keep an eye on to the margin. So this means that it's important that you always focus on the tailored made services, especially the consultancy service that you provide to your client. So that's very important. Another company is called Securitas AB Company. And of course, very similar to Safewell in the current case. So we are told the portfolio of this company includes also the consultancy and also investigations functions uh, which concentrate on risk management and also the intelligence-led security systems. I will tell you exactly uh, what are they in a second. The third company is called Garda World Company and of course similar to the current case that it offers very tailor-made services the clients require in a crisis management and also strategic advisory services. Now, so making sure that you have a key word in your mind, okay, before we move any further, is that tailor-made services, yes, we should keep an eye on to that, okay, so when we are thinking about the strategy. Now, what would be the risk, okay, so that the company may be encountering when it operates this business? Well, for example, for the G4S, it has a scandal during 2012 in the London Olympics. Now, at that particular moment in time, it signed the contract with the UK government. However, the G4S company faced a shortage of security personnel. So, which means it didn't have enough staff, okay, to provide the service. So at that particular moment in time, of course, the, uh, the UK government has rectified this by assigning more staff from the government okay, to make up the shortfall. However, from this issue, we can see that we are not particularly flexible in, in, in terms of working in this industry because, as you can see, that we are in the service industry and we rely on human beings. Now, if we rely on human beings in a lot of countries, especially that we've got the trade union and the staff or the members, okay, so working in our company may strike if they are not finding the remuneration or the uh, payment package to them to be attractive indeed. So if that's the case, then yes, we'll face a severe risk here of not having enough staff to perform a particular task. So the ways that we manage our P 
people or the staff would be very, very important in this industry. Otherwise, it will certainly hurt your reputation. And don't forget that according to our pricing, as you can say, we are also given the share price movement. As you can say, that although our beta is 0.88, which means less than one, and which means we are not particularly risky compared to the market average. However, if you look at the share price, it has been the long-term decrease, okay, from 2019 up to 2024 nowadays. So this would suggest the fact that if we are facing increased risk, so from, for example, not having enough staff to perform a particular task, the share price may continue to fall. And of course, the shareholders' wealth would be reduced and they would not be happy about that. So always think about that, yes, reputation and staff will be very important to make sure that to maintain our share price in the long run in order to maximize the shareholders wealth now another application is that another risk that uh, the companies in this industry will be currently facing or quite often to be facing will be the example i've taken from a real company is called equifast company now this company has encountered the data breach scandal now, uh, the company operating in this industry, of course, if, we're, if we are working with the clients, we need all sorts of information from a client's company. Now, the client's company would have its own customer base, so it's very likely that we may be getting access to uh, certain customer data, or if you are not having a particularly well security system in place, that the, our clients' customer base data may be hacked by somebody else. So this would be a strategic thing that we always need to consider. So especially that if the Safeway company later on may be operating in less developed countries, so we may be facing a higher risk regarding this area. Now, at that particular moment in time that the company called Equifast Company, yes, data breach. A lot of customer data has been hacked by somebody else. And therefore, yes, it will certainly face uh, a lot of issues, including sanctions, okay, millions of sanctions by the government and the relevant authorities, and also lose trust by the consumers. And ultimately, it will certainly affect his share price. Now, I'd like to also tell you a bit more about the financial statement characteristic of such companies in this industry. Now, firstly, when we analyse the financial statement, we would expect that the revenue may be including the contract for physical security services and also the consultancy. Of course, for the physical security services, such as the mount guarding, mobile patrols, and security systems. So mount guarding, which means having human beings and to safeguard the asset and to look after the asset. Uh, so another one will be the mobile patrols, which means that when we are moving, okay, so we are simply keeping an eye on to the stuff and making sure that they are operating effectively. A security systems in place and, and, and making sure that so all the bits and pieces, yes, in terms of its security, would be fine there. So we need to uh, assign, uh, so for example, different uh, systems, including the equipment and, and the staff, and making sure that security is okay. Now, consultancy, on the other hand, will be quite tailored indeed. So, for example, the risk assessment of the companies or other organisations, corporate investigations of what is going on and who is uh, perpetrating the fraud and we need to uh, find that person's out and the cyber security so all sorts of services that we would like to provide that now 
are going to be seeing that Red Nought's the company will be able to diversify the revenue stream. That's important there. And other thing when we are analyzing the financial statement will be to keeping our eye on to its operating costs. Now, the operating costs, the major cost for this will be certainly the labor cost because that will be a service industry. And this is why the labor intensive industry characteristic we need to keep an eye on to the wages that we pay to them. And all sorts of costs related to the innovation technology and also depreciation of the security systems equipment. So we need to keep an eye on to those as well. Now, we also need to focus on, for example, the capital expenditure regarding the physical asset, such as the security vehicles, cars and so on, trucks, and equipment for security personnel, so for example, the uniforms or the security gear, which means the equipment uh, related to the security, uh, and also including the internet stuff. If we are operating uh, in overseas countries where we are operating in less developed countries, we may need to invest further monies into the uh, internet stuff, that kind of thing. Another element in the financial statement will be to keep an eye on to the account receivables because in such industries, companies will often sign a higher value contract with its client. So whether or not you're able to get the money back will be a stuff. Liquidity measure, especially the cash reserve, because in this industry, we may be facing a lot of unexpected issue to come up. So for example, like we are providing the physical security services, a lot of emergency problems may pop up. Uh, this is why you may need to allocate additional staff okay, to look after the issue, and therefore cash would be very important there. Margins, yes, important. And of course, in this industry, because lots of operating costs in there, so as you can see in our financial statements, for example, the net profit margin is approximately at 12%, something like that, whereas the uh, operating profit margin is approximately 15% and something like that. So I would say that, yes, it's quite low. So therefore, keeping an eye on to the margin will always be very important there. The debt levels, I would expect that in this industry will be relatively high. If you can see, that the uh, gearing that I've calculated for you later on, yes, is higher than 50%, and it's, it would be quite normal in this industry. Yes, you may be suggesting to the management that increasing the amount of shares to be issued. However, I, I would say that if you got enough profit to pay off the interest expense, instead of taking the right issues for example, because the company has already been a public listed company. So later on, uh, having right issues of shares may not be a particularly good option there. So why not to introduce additional debt? So that would be the idea that you can consider. I would expect the R&D expenditure to be high and also the cost related to the regulatory compliance. So for example, the, uh, the Data Protection Act such as in the EU, the uh, General Data Protection Regulation or GDPR, that kind of stuff. Uh, that would certainly affect the profitability of this company. Of course, when we are managing such companies uh, from a holistic point of view, when we are reading the financial statements, for example, although in this paper you are not very likely to get the IFRS related uh, uh, question in this paper. However, when we are reading the financial statement, I will always keep an eye on to the cost control related to labor and also the depreciation expenses. And also, when we need to manage our cash flows very, very carefully, being able to receive the uh, money from the account receivables and also having enough cash reserves to deal with the uh, emergency issues. And also investing in technology and training, okay, so that's very important there, and also making sure that we are not fined, 
too much, okay, by the laws and regulations, and to manage our risks and compliance properly. So these are my management focus for the safe well company in this industry. Now, what I would do is that because in the uh, pre scene, firstly, we are also told about that we are operating our business on a global basis. Now, what do I mean by global basis? So this means that you may be having your offices in yes, developed countries, but also having offices in less developed countries. Now, what would be the risks if you are having offices in those developing countries? Firstly, the regulatory environment will be absolutely different there. It will be very, very complicated in terms of the data protection. So you may be accused of hacking into a client system if you are not signing any particular additional document with the clients before you provide the services. So make sure that you will avoid these legal risks. And also the employee licensing, because very, very tricky, uh, the, the regulations may be not quite clear and subject to change without any notice at all. So whether or not you're able to use these employees in these countries, we're not particularly sure. So make sure always keeping an eye on if on the exam date that the exam question may be asking you that what will be the risks that we need to consider. So yes, you need to tell the examining team about yes, the regulatory requirements may be very complicated. At the same time, from an economics point of view, the, the economic part is not particularly good there in less developed countries or maybe more volatile. So this is why in the syllabus you are required to know about the hedging options. Okay, so for example, if you're taking on additional debt, so you may be thinking about to fix that interest rate when you borrow some money, okay, overseas, or perhaps that you are receiving money from the foreign customer, so you are afraid that the forex rate may change. So why not to use, let's say, the swap contract, for example. You always need to bear in mind about the security risk, because in less developed countries, or where countries we've got lots of uh, religious groups, so you need to think about certain emergency uh, problems that may come up. And also there might be limitations on, in terms of infrastructure, in terms of uh, the internet access. So this is why we may be considering additional investment in terms of uh, spending our money in investing in the internet stuff and to make sure that we get the updated information in this company. So very, very important that we, you need to get the real-time information, okay? So, at all times. Now, in terms of financial management, okay, in this industry, the strategies I would like to suggest to the examining team is that, firstly, localised financial planning. Because if you're operating in less developed countries, it may be relatively difficult for you to get the money back, okay, from the foreign country to your home country. So the reason why I'm saying this is because there might be lots of complexities in real life in terms of your uh, currency issues, in terms of your money flow issues. So this means that uh, you may be thinking about that if you earned money in the local country when you withdraw the money back. So it may be subject to laws and regulations that you cannot really withdraw 100% of that. You may be thinking about the tax issue as well, especially the withholding tax that may be charged by the less developed countries. So if this is the case then, it will be problematic for the service companies because for service companies, unlike uh, the physical companies where we uh, distribute a product to our customers, we've got lots and lots of documents to check by the tax authorities. However, for the service companies such as uh, the Safe Rail Company, 
So it may be relatively difficult, okay, for you to prove to a tax authority in some cases that you provided the service already and to get your money back. So the withholding tax issue, the corporate tax issue in the local country when you set up your business over there, so may need to be considered more carefully. You need to think about how to manage your costs, okay, including the investments in terms of your infrastructure, human beings, and whether or not you're able to diversify your revenue, and also whether or not you're able to having the local staff to work with you, including the expert team in terms of the legal issues. And making sure that you reduce your risks and uh, making sure that you are complying with the relevant regulations. That's very important when you're thinking about to be working in less developed countries. So making sure that insurance, legal reserves, okay, and compliance related investment that you've spent your money on to those areas, okay, so making sure that you're complying with all of these stuff. Now, Looking back to the introduction paragraph, I've analysed it for you. So firstly, we had a quoted company. We really focus on our share price and also the shareholders' wealth. And we are given different threats, okay? So I'll analyse it in much more detail in later recordings. Operating on a global basis, so this means that we may be thinking about later on, on the exam day, that we may be uh, setting up additional offices in, in, in less developed countries. And there will be certain risks that we need to consider in there. Now, uh, before we finish this recording, I'd like to also show you about the, for example, from chapter three onwards, for the core activity A to develop business strategy. Now, according to CGMA, their requirement is that you can answer these questions, okay, so you can pass the strategic case study examination more easily. Now, firstly, you need to be able to evaluate strategies. Now, the model that we will be using is the SFA test. Firstly, is the suitability. Now, application to a safe oil company that I'll bring the pre information into the knowledge note such as this. So, for example, the company operates globally and with a global presence in terms of the physical and intelligence-led security services. So this means that we've used our existing infrastructure so we can quickly adapt to the market if we were to expand our market overseas. Now, in your answer, I mean, the tip that we can pass the SCX examination is that in each of your answer, in each of your paragraph, make sure you try your best to link the information from pre scene so you can get quality marks, okay, in this paper. Another example I'd like to show with you is that, for example, when talking about the big data according to the syllabus, okay, in the E3, for example, we've got different Vs. Now, the first V standing for volume. Now, uh, how we link the pre seen information to volume, for example. Now, let's say that our company collects lots of data from global clients, and the data providing insight to security trend, and we also have got challenges that maybe we've got irrelevant data or outdated data. So, therefore, from our operations point of view, from on-site guarding, to online, so such as the cyber security, we need to manage large volume of data using advanced data analytics and to make sure that we can detect those threats and responding to them more appropriately. Now, so this is how we are trying to link the syllabus knowledge point by point, bit by bit, with the pre scene That's very important there. Now, my approach so helping you to pass this strategic case study exam is that firstly, we've got the, the pre scene application note. Uh, it's approximately 160 pages, all related to the Safeway company. And secondly, if you enrolled in our 
package, for example, we've also got the tutor debrief to helping you to go through the pre seed material, including the application, in a very, very quick manner, okay, such as this recording, to tell you exactly what you need to know, what you need to remember during your case study exam. And thirdly, we've also got our mock exams as well. Okay, so we'll tip lots of questions in the mock exam and then you need to attempt the mock exam and you can submit your answer so we can mark them for you professionally by our expert tutors. So I hope you find the first section of the strategic case study exam for the Safeway company useful. I'm going to be stopping the recording now and I look forward to seeing you in the next of our section then. Bye-bye. APC, accounting for your future.